Today, I want to talk and introduce to you a, a new uh, seismic imaging technology, uh, namely uh, multifocusing technology. First of all, let us uh, see, let us define the, the place which uh, uh, multifocusing has in the general uh, seismic data imaging uh, process. We can look at uh, multifocusing uh, from two sides. One side, which is mostly published and used today, is uh, seismic imaging. And uh, mostly it is uh, time imaging. But uh, I suggest to look more generally on the multifocusing and consider it as a, uh, as a method for data analysis, pre-stack data analysis, or data even decomposition. In fact, as you will see later, uh, what we do is taking the raw seismic data, we analyze the parameters of the total wave field and we use these parameters for different applications. One of them is a time imaging. Here I will concentrate mostly on the uh, time imaging part of the multifocusing and uh, because of this I want to say a few words about the time and depth imaging. Although today Depth imaging is a dominating idea of the seismic uh, exploration industry and of course the, the ultimate goal uh, we all have is uh, to create the, the reliable and the correct uh, depth image. And very often we hear the comparison between time and depth. And some people even think that we don't need time imaging more, we can directly go to depth. First of all, there is no uh, contradiction between depth and time imaging. Time imaging in any case is not competing with depth imaging. But we should remember always that depth imaging to be successful requests velocity model, correct velocity model. Uh, whereas time imaging can be constructed using only the seismic data without any a priori information and in fact time imaging is what we call model independent. It means that we don't need directly the, the, the interval velocity subsurface model. So because multifocusing is time imaging it is naturally to compare it with the uh, the most popular probably and most powerful method of time imaging which we call common midpoint method CMP uh, imaging. What CMP is doing, I will remind shortly, is taking the seismic data, sorting it in CMP gathers, performing velocity analysis, computing the semblance panels, then deciding which velocity is the optimal, constructing the move-out correction and uh, time image. In fact, multifocusing is doing, is doing the same or similar uh, workflow. It takes the seismic data, but now we don't need to sort it in CMP gathers. We analyze the seismic data to extract some waveform, wavefront parameters, and I will explain which parameters later. Then we do multifocusing move out correction and creating a seismic image. This seismic image is a time image which uh, can be a zero offset approximation, like in the CMP method, or time migrated image. Of course, these parameters are very important later for constructing the velocity depth, velocity, uh, depth uh, model, which is necessary for depth imaging. So, you mentioned already probably that the difference, the main difference between the CMP method and the, the multifocusing is that we don't need to sort data into uh, CMP gathers. And this is very essential in principle 
uh, problem. Because sorting the data in the CMP gathers uh, limits the number of traces which can be stacked for one imaging point. Now, if we want to increase the fold of the CMP, we have only one choice, to go to further offsets, which is not a good idea because the CMP method is, uh, by definition, is short offset approximation, and going to, to far offsets, and by this increasing the number of traces, we violate, in fact, the CMP assumption. But in the CMP method, we don't have another choice because we should respect the CMP geometry. The source receiver distance from the imaging point should be equal. So why we don't take other traces into account, which are located much more close to the imaging point than the far traces? Because the uh, wonderful CMP hyperbola, which uh, is used to approximate travel times, has uh, this limitation. It is valid only for CMP geometry. But it is uh, one parameter search only. This is the good point. And the bad point is that it is not valid for arbitrary observation geometry. In fact, now I already presented to you the main idea of the multifocusing is to find a new move-out correction which will be valid for arbitrary observation geometry. Yeah. To do this, I'm not going here into mathematical details, but all this mathematics was developed about, uh, you know what, about two decades ago already, and using the ray theory, the classical ray theory, and wave propagation, considering the, the propagation of the wave fronts into uh, the arbitrary, inhomogeneous uh, model, uh, we derived a correction, time correction, which allows to align arbitrary source receiver pair to apply this time correction and stacking the super gather or the multifocusing gather to, const to construct the multifocusing section. Again, not going to the mathematics, which is not too complex but uh, long uh, and based on the classical ray theory, I can show you, I can tell you that the multifocusing correction formula is represented by two uh, roots, square roots. Yeah? Uh, one is responsible for uh, correction into the source direction. The other uh, square root is responsible for the time uh, shift, which is uh, uh, for receiver, arbitrary receiver. And the, what is important that this formula, this uh, move out correction now depends on three unknown parameters for 2D case. And uh, these parameters are connected directly, uh, analytically, to three parameters of the paraxial ray tracing or ray theory. So one of the parameters is emergence angle of the normal ray. The other two parameters are radius of curvatures of two uh, fundamental uh, solutions for paraxial ray uh, tracing. It is radius of cur curvature for the normal ray, which we call RCRE, and the other parameter is radius of curvature for the normal incident point uh, ray or wave, which we call RCE. These two radius of curvatures, in fact, define the travel time for an arbitrary source receiver pair around in some vicinity of the normal ray. So after we have this 
this uh, formulation, this formula for uh, travel time correction, now the question is how to get these three parameters from the data. So now we need to know these three parameters to construct optimal zero offset approximation. To do this, in fact, uh, we will use the strategy which we um, use for the conventional CMP method. We will scan these three parameters and we will compute or calculate the semblance objective function or coherency measure for a super gather for a number of the CMP gathers taken uh, together. So doing this scan we will find the maximum or the, the, the triple for each uh, imaging position and each uh, time sample we can find uh, triplets which give us the maximum samples. This is more or less what we do for uh, stacking velocity analysis. The problem in this approach is of course the super difficult com computations of very heavy because we need to scan instead of one parameter which in CMP method is just a, a, a stacking velocity we will need to search for three unknown parameters and of course this is even even for uh, for modern clusters it's a quite a difficult problem which is more or less on the same level of uh, computing as we do for uh, press stack depth migration. In 3D it becomes even worse. Instead of three parameters we search for two angles and six radius of curvatures. Three for normal incident point wave and three for a uh, normal wave. So, but it is solvable and it is only a question of our computer facilities and now uh, I would say uh, clever implementation schemes. This is done and I'm not going to go into details how it is done because I want to, to stay more on the geophysical part of the problem and to see the, the main advantages of the multifocusing compared to the other to the other imaging techniques. First of all, because we do the velocity analysis or the parameter analysis very densely, uh, practically we do it for each imaging point each CMP location and each time sample. We have a very dense maps or in 3D uh, cubes of the multifocusing parameters and we can display them and use them for different applications in processing and imaging and interpretation. Now each uh, imaging point now has a much higher fold of summation than CMP method because now we sum into one imaging sample we sum much more traces sometimes it's several orders more traces than we do it in the CMP method and this is the first advantage of the multifocusing is to extract very weak signals in the case of low uh, signal to noise ratio or in a low fold what we call low fold data in the CMP sense. Second advantage I would mention immediately is that all our uh, developments are done from topography and not from the datum fixed of floating. So it means that we can work in very rough topographic areas and correctly uh, align the, the reflection events, which is not done or it's difficult to do in the CMP method because the, the hyperbola uh, is valid again for flat uh, observation surface. So our all uh, imaging 
and construction of images is done from real top topography. The other advantage of uh, the multifocusing, which can be mentioned here, is the interactivity which can be and which should be uh, done in this processing. The processor together with the, the interpreter, with the geologist, the geophysicist, in fact creates the, the possible corridors for the uh, multifocusing parameters. We are not doing the blind scanning. First of all, it saves time, but more important is in this way we are very flexible to, uh, to struggle to attenuate the unwanted seismic events like multiples, like seismic coherent noise and uh, so on. There are many other advantages and interesting features, uh, some of them I will mention later, but now I want to go and to show you several case studies from different parts of the world uh, which we, we have and uh, which I want to bring to your attention. So, first I show you the, the 2D cases from uh, West Siberia, Russia. You see how the conventional image, uh, which is shown on the left-hand side, uh, is different from the multifocusing uh, which is shown always on the uh, right hand side. Yeah. Even in the cases of very simple structural situation like here which is almost flat layers we have a, a, a very clear advantage in the signal to noise ratio. When we go to complex uh, uh, areas like uh, in Pakistan in the foothills yeah, the advantage is even more clear and more dramatic. We worked also on Kamchatka, Russia, in the volcano areas, in the permafrost in East Siberia, in the data, we used the data, and this is one of uh, possible uh, applications of the multifocusing, is using the very old vintage data with very low fold, 6, 12. Because of increasing the fold, of the data we can extract very weak signals like in this case of uh, uh, northwestern Russia. We worked in British Columbia where the foothills problem of the imaging is very known and very uh, popular in this area and our results are dramatically better than the conventional uh, processing including PSTM and even PSDM. 3D is more difficult to, to, to get, of course, but the results uh, justifies the, the price and the, uh, our uh, experience with the 3D cubes and the examples which you show here, which uh, I show you here, uh, shows the, 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 the huge advantage of of the multifocusing compare the conventional processing including PSDM uh, depth migration uh, methods. If you look at, at the time slices or depth slices uh, you can have you can see the, the, the advantage when when the conventional processing may may give in many cases just a very noisy noisy picture multifocusing is able to extract very weak signals bringing to us a very valuable information about the, 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 the subsurface. 